everybody knows that I'm the little brother and I only come with love. So gotcha. I'm not coming to beat you down. I'm coming to build you up. But I do see what's funny. Wait, wait, wait. And I'm going to talk about it. They, yeah. We didn't walk away from a franchise. They didn't want to make our deal. And they snatched it. And they mm -hmm. was like, they just did some, Weinstein's did really terrible, like. For a while now, the Wayans have been dragging some Hollywood elites for stealing their brainchild, Scary Movie, and ripping them off. Well, it looks like Marlon Wayans, the youngest Wayan sibling, has entered the chat and is now name dropping the Hollywood moguls who stole the family's idea. As y'all know, the Wayans dominated the parody genre for decades, with different hit movies dropping every few years, building themselves an empire worth almost half a billion dollars. But all of a sudden, we stopped hearing about the Wayans completely. It was like they vanished off the surface of the earth. Allegedly, the Wyans' disappearing act was very deliberate because not only did certain Hollywood elites steal their ideas, but they also tried to blackball them and ruin their legacy. Well, it looks like Marlon Wayans is tired of keeping quiet about this whole business, and he's naming the people who did his family dirty. But was Scary Movie really stolen from the Wyans? And is that why we haven't really heard much about them for a while now? Let's get into it. Return to the Scary Movie franchise and do it. Got, but I, I will return. So Harvey Weinstein owns Scary Movie? No, they, they're all. The Weinstein Company. Uh, they off it. They out. They out. They out. Okay. So and that, that's why I would return to it. To return to it now. I think that. So Marlon Wayans has been granting a series of interviews talking about how Hollywood did his family dirty and stole not just money but also their legacy. And it seems like people are finally paying attention to what Marlon has to say because he's not just telling stories this time. He's naming names and dropping receipts. For those of y'all that have forgotten, or for the youngins who don't know about the Wayans, let's give you a little context. So the Wayans family are literally the kings of parody films. Let's go back in time to 1988 when Keenan Ivory Wayans made his directorial debut in the 1988 black parody, I'm Gonna Get You Sucka. Next up was the Emmy-winning sketch comedy show, In Living Color, which had a star-studded cast comprising Jim Carrey, Tommy Davison, Jamie Foxx, and so on. For In Living Color, there wasn't anybody or any topic that was off-limits. They heavily parodied different pop culture and political figures and moments, and the audience was eating it up. I mean, this show couldn't have come at a better time time. The Wayans continued the parody trend in 1996 with Don't Be a Menace to South Central While Drinking Your Juice in the Hood, which parodied several of the most popular hood films at the time. Some of the notable ones Don't Be a Menace parodied are Juice, South Central, Poetic Justice, Friday, Boys in the Hood, and Menace to Society. Don't Be a Menace went on to make $20.1 million at the box office, meaning it made five times more than its $3.8 million budget. Y'all, the Wayans were out here randomly creating the blueprint for making hits and earning a ton of money while they were at it. I mean, they had this thing on lock. After Don't Be a Menace was released, Sean and Marlon started working on their own project, sticking with the parody business, but they decided to focus on doing parodies of the horror genre. Keen later revealed that he considered the project a redemption for himself after the cancellation of In Living Color. Between the brilliant cast and the Wyans brothers' comedic genius, they would produce a movie that would break so many boundaries and stand the test of time. They named it Scary Movie, and it laid the groundwork for the much-anticipated sequel. Scary Movie is a parody of several movies in the horror genre, including Scream. In a 2000 interview with Jet Magazine, Marlon Wayans said he and his brother Sean decided to write Scary Movie while they were watching one of the movies they would eventually parody. He said, I think we were watching I Know What You Did Last Summer, and we said, I know what I'm gonna do next summer. I'm gonna make fun of all these damn movies I'm so tired of seeing. I watched Scream till I wanted to scream. I've seen I Know What You Did Last Summer so so much that I wanted to become a murderer and off anybody who ever made one of these movies. Sean also talked about his inspiration for the movie, saying, We just found these slasher movies to be kind of ridiculous, and I thought it would be funny to do a parody. But it was one of the hardest movies to write. It looks like a silly slapstick film, but it was not an easy movie to execute. Sean and Marlon also talked about how the script went through several drafts for them to fine-tune it. When we first wrote it, we wrote it with a black male lead, but Keenan told us, and he was right, it wasn't true to the genre. Genre, so we changed it up and made our heroine a white girl lead, a little ditzy white girl. According to the brothers, Marlon wrote the first screenplay called Last Summer I Screamed Because Friday the 13th Fell on Halloween, but that one just didn't cut it. We developed so many different versions of this movie. We worked with our brother Keenan and we wrote a black draft, a white draft, a high school draft, and a college draft. And yet they still had to hawk their script from producer to producer to find one that was willing to produce scary movie. Ten drafts and many rejections later, the Weinstein brothers finally took a chance
comments on the Wyans and gave the project the green light. Finally, after months of waiting, Scary Movie was released on July 7, 2000. The movie follows a group of high school students who accidentally off someone, and as a result, they're haunted by a mass murderer. Marlon and Sean starred in the movie alongside Regina Hall and Anna Faris. Scary Movie would actually change the lives of the Wyans and expose them to a lot of things, good and bad, depending on where you're looking from. It also made history, breaking the record of the highest grossing film directed by an African American. At the time, many people, especially the Wyans brothers, believed it was like the right movie at the right time done by the right people. That's really what I feel like it was, and you never know, another one can happen. There's always room. Interestingly, the original scary movie was made on a budget of 19 million. However, thanks to the brilliant writing of the Wayans, the movie earned 110 million after just two weeks. It would go on to gross a whopping 278 million worldwide, out of which 157 million came from the US. Naturally, fans wanted a sequel, and the Wayans brothers were more than happy to oblige. Scary Movie 2 was released on July 4, 2001, just a year after the release of the first part. This time, the budget was $45 million, and the movie grossed over $140 million worldwide. Although it didn't do as well as the first one, it was still very impressive nonetheless, and it made the studios a ton of money. It was like the Wayans had struck gold. Just so you know, Scary Movie 1 and 2 were produced by Dimension Films, a subsidiary of Lantern Entertainment. It was ironic because Scary Movie also spoofed Scream, which was produced by Dimension Films. And get this, Dimension Films was formerly used as Harvey and Bob Weinstein's label within Miramax, and later became a part of the Weinstein Company in 2005. Scary Movie 1 and 2 was also distributed by Miramax Films. So, the point here is that Harvey Weinstein and his brother Bob had their hands on every step of production, marketing, and distribution of Scary Movie. Now, this little bit is important because, according to the Wyans, the Weinstein brothers fired them as writers on the film and stole their ideas. Marlon Wyans said in an interview, I could write a book on that whole thing, honestly. They definitely still owe us money, lots of money. What they did was really bad business. Because of the wild success of Scary Movie 1 and 2, studios all over the country were scrambling to understand what exactly was going on. Bob Weinstein said, Other studios were going, What just happened? It was like winning the Super Bowl. Just the most unbelievable thing. Well, it would turn out that, as usual, the big studios were only in it for the money. They didn't really care about the artistic or political importance of the movie. And we know this because Scary Movie 2 got mostly negative reviews from critics despite its commercial success. The Wyans later talked about how they were rushed into creating Scary Movie 2 because the big guys wanted to make more money. Marlon Wyans outrightly blamed the studio for the failure of Scary Movie 2 to meet up with Scary Movie 1. By 2003, Scary Movie 3 had been released. However, the fans who had been eagerly waiting to experience the same comedic goal that was parts 1 and 2 were disappointed. They quickly pointed out a difference in Tony, like there was just something off about it. Well, the simple explanation was that the Wayans were not involved in the reading or production of Part 3. In 2003, Reading Eagle Voices correspondent Ian Mogul reported, The first thing I noticed when watching the previews was that the Wayans brothers were absent. I was very disappointed. Sean and Marlon provided the funniest character from the first two films, so Scary Movie 3 already had an uphill climb. Now, although the Wayans haven't been particularly noisy about what really made them stop producing Scary Movie, Marlon Wayan has decided to take on that responsibility personally. And according to Marlon, his family never wanted to stop being involved in the Scary Movie franchise. In an interview, Marlon said, People kept blaming us. We did Scary Movie 1 and 2, the funny ones. Everybody thinks we left the franchise or we sold it. No, it was taken from us. So as promising as the Scary Movie franchise was, Marlon described it as the worst deal his family had ever made. He didn't hold back when he went on Kevin Hart's podcast, Comedy Gold Mines. Evil as f they, yeah. We didn't walk away from a franchise. They didn't want to make our deal and they snatched it. And they mm -hmm. was like, they just did some, Weinstein's did really terrible, like pillage villages yeah. type of business. If they did, if uh, the art of war was a, um, was real, then they would be the dynasty that in pillaged villages. That's just the way they did their business. So it wasn't that we, we never walked away from our franchise that we created. The, the, it was taken and us being the creatives that we are was like, I bet you now watch what I create. Yeah, watch what I go. I'm you can't, you can else. take, you can take that. I mean, we probably should sue for hundreds of millions of dollars because they probably owe us a shitload of money. Mm -hmm. And maybe one day we will, but that we didn't walk away from our franchise. 
took it. Took it. Yeah. Child, that is one hot stanking mess. An article by The Independent reported that the Wyans wanted more money because obviously they were making the studio a ton of money. However, the Weinstein brothers were not willing to pay. As a result, they fired the Wyans and decided to write and direct scary movies 3, 4, and 5 by themselves. As you can expect, it was a disaster. Marlon later described it as tired, claiming the Weinsteins stole their pitch for Scary Movie 3. But when the studio realized they would never be able to recreate the magic that the Wayans did with 1 and 2, they decided to invite them to create the fifth installment of the movie. On the flip side, some people believe the reason why the Weinsteins did what they did was that people were no longer interested in the Wyans brand of comedy. Take Damon Wyans, for example. In line with the family's tradition, Damon had a long and successful career doing many movies and sitcoms. As y'all know, his successful career is largely due to his role in the show, In Living Color, which he starred in from 1990 to 1993. So basically, his career was built off comedy, and when he wanted to return to the acting scene, nobody was surprised to see that he was reaching back for his roots. In 2006, Damon staged a return to TV comedy sketch The Underground series, but sadly, it didn't do too well. Now, it's not really clear why audiences weren't excited about the show, but the running theory is that it was due to poor marketing and promotion of the show. I mean, The Underground aired on Showtime and was basically marketed as in living color on steroids. But when fans finally got around to watching it, they weren't impressed at all. Variety Variety even slammed the show, saying it plays like warmed over improv stew that labors way too hard to shock. The Underground was later canceled after just one 10 episode season. What's also interesting is that Sean and Marlon Wayans created White Chicks in 2004, playing undercover FBI agents in whiteface as spoiled young, rich women. They also created Little Man, where Marlon played the role of a short felon posing as a baby. Even as successful as the Wayans' other ventures had been up to this point, White Chicks only grossed a modest $70 million at the box office, while Little Man earned $58 million. This figure went further down by the time Dance Flick was released in 2009, and it earned only $25 million. Now, success when it comes to things like this is pretty relative, but given how successful the other Wayans' projects had been, the message was pretty clear, their shtick was getting tired. As if that wasn't bad enough, Damon Wayans was out here generating bad press for the franchise by showing support for Bill Cosby. For those who don't know, Bill Cosby was one of the most celebrated entertainers until multiple women accused him of allegedly violating them. To everyone's shock, when Damon Wyans got his chance to speak on the matter, he said many controversial things. During a 2015 radio interview on New York hip-hop station Power 105.1, Damon said if he were Bill Cosby, he would divorce my wife, wink wink, give her all my money, and then I would go do a deposition. I would light one of them three-hour cigars, I'd have me some wine and maybe a quaalude, and I would just go off because I don't believe he was blanking. Basically, Damon was insinuating that Bill Cosby was in relationships with his all his accusers and that they were only pressed because he couldn't get it up anymore. He then said they were just trying to make a bag off the old man what he called a money hustle. Girl, when I tell you that man was just going on and on about it. Of course, when fans heard what Damon said, they weren't happy about it. Another thing fans have pointed out is that the weigh-ins just kind of seem like they've run out of juice. And make no mistake, in its prime, White Chicks was gold. It delved into the Miss 2000s rise of wealthy celebrities famous for nothing more than being famous, like Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie. It was an absolute masterpiece, a classic. And the best part, it made about $70 million at the box office on a budget of $37 million. In 2009, a reboot of White Chicks was announced, but was later scrapped for unknown reasons. The Wayans picked up the project again in 2015, but again, we didn't see anything. Then, in 2019, Terry Crews, who played the role of Latrell Spencer, one of the most memorable supporting roles in the original, revealed that a sequel was happening. Marlins also told a fan on MTV's TRL, I don't know, but there's been some rumblings happening. A lot of people want us to do it, so me and my brothers have been talking. So if things go right, we hope to do a White Chicks 2. However, Marlin later backpedaled on that, saying while talks were already taking place, it wasn't a done deal yet. Marlin also said it was kind of tiring having to sit in a makeup chair for hours on end for the process of getting transformed into a white blonde, which is kind of the entire point of the original. So if you've been holding your breath for a White Chicks reboot, sorry 
for the disappointment. But at this point, fans of the Wayans must be used to disappointment because in 2012, Deadline reported the two In Living Color specials would air as part of the Fox Network's 25th anniversary celebration. Keenan Ivory Wayans was slated to return as an executive producer, but it was revealed that there would be an all-new cast, including Kaylee Hawk, Jermaine Fowler, Lil Rel Howery, and Jennifer Bartles. But the tentative May 2012 release date came and went, and we didn't see anything. It wasn't until January 2013 that Keenan confirmed with the New York Post that In Living Color 2.0 wouldn't be happening. He said, The bar for In Living Color is so high that if I didn't feel like we could sustain that, then I did not want to move forward. I don't know about y'all, but this all just feels like the Wyans have run out of material, and they're just trying to hang on to the dregs of past glory. Not that there's anything wrong with that in itself. However, fans have pointed out that everything Marlon is saying now sounds a little like blaming others for your failures. Still, this doesn't change the fact that Harvey Weinstein and his brother Bob Weinstein did the Wyans dirty by stealing their ideas and blackballing them, then backpedaling and trying to use them to create the fifth installment of the movie. But as fate would have it, the Weinstein company was dissolved in 2018 following the exposure of Harvey by many women and girls. Meanwhile, the brothers are still creating other new movies and have moved on from the whole incident. But I would do what chicks do, and I That'd would. I think I think that and return to the scary movie franchise and do it. Got, but I, I will return. So Harvey Weinstein owns scary movie? No, they they off the Weinstein it. company. Uh, they off it. They out. They out. They out. Okay. So and that, that's why I would return to it. To return to it now. I think that it needs a, a reboot, and I think that uh, there's only the only story that people want to hear is the Wayans is about. Otherwise, you right. know, because we know how to tell those jokes. Right. There's only certain people that could tell jokes about everybody and nobody get offended. And right. we're those people. God damn it. That's, That's real. Good. It's not every day you get a happy ending in Hollywood, but I can't even lie, this one was very satisfying. So, what do y'all think about everything that went down between the Wyans and the Weinsteins? Sound off in the comments below, and we'll see you in the next video.